to introduce you to Jaron Jensen. <laughs> Oh, 
Um, you guys have the best crew ever. I was actually in Vancouver last week, and I've gone on set, and your crew is just, just a heart and soul. I love them so much. Um, but the question is, there are so many loose ends. Uh, this, the writers have been tight. Which are the storylines that you would like them to go back and readdress? I don't want them to start tying up loose ends because that means they're going to tie up all the ends. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be out of a job. Um, there are so many, though. There are so many. Uh, I, think, uh, I, can think, I can think a few off the top of my head. Uh, I'd love to visit, the, uh, see what's going on with Benny. Uh, <laughs> So there's, <laughs> the, yeah, so it's him. Uh, so there are, and this, this is, I'm kind of selfishly speaking because I, I really enjoy working with those, those two actors. Um, but yes, there, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of those things that kind of, questions that, that get asked or, or maybe a scene that cuts just before we really understand. Now, I will say that coming up, there is an answer to a question that's been asked for quite a long time. Shh! I'm not gonna give it away. They probably don't know. <laughs> I'm the last to know, anyway. So. Rob? What? Rob? No. Yeah, no, he's Rob. Getting warmer. Getting warmer. <laughs> I, I will say that it, there is. It, it, it is related to. It is related to Rob. Uh, but it is a question that's been asked for a long time. Uh, I too, part of me, would love for Dean to go back and revisit Benny and um, Kane, because that means I'm an awesome And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, Dean's with Benny, let's see what's going on with Sam. No, no, no. Audience doesn't care. <laughs> no, I mean, like, please don't care so I can go back home. <laughs> uh, maybe the, uh, the Antichrist kid? Yeah. I threw a sandal on him. And Adam. <laughs> I would like to see. I would like to see uh, the the heavenly celestial card game that's going on between John Winchester, Bobby Singer, Rufus. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I wish we could have posted that video. What video? From Phil. When did we get the clearance? We have another. We have clearance, Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, Roger, what's our next one? <laughs> There's another really funny, shady people punching things um, two-minute video that a lot of people ask, what's it like behind the scenes? And this is a legitimate, like the cameras are just kind of running for two minutes and you see what happens in between two takes in its entirety cut together and it's pretty funny. Uh, I laughed out loud and rewatched it. And I was getting my tire fixed because my wife had a chuck hole and the tire exploded. So I had to go like wait at the GMC dealership. And so I was like, oh, I got an email. So I'm sitting there going, <laughs> Yeah, you know what, also, in all, in, realistically, I was a huge fan of the first season of Lost, and I might like the rest of it, I haven't had the chance to sit down and watch it all, <laughs> but when season two started, one of the things I didn't like, and sometimes a loose end is tied up, and like, I think J.K. Rowling and J.R. Tolkien were geniuses at how to tie up all the loose ends with, with no more questions asked, but sometimes tying up a loose end just to tie it up can kind of jump the shark, right? So I think these are questions that they're like, well, let's kind of keep it in the uh, ethosphere. Um, so maybe we'll never get to answer those questions, but uh, hopefully if we go long enough. So I'll keep bringing us back. I mean, you guys can have what we get, so. Um, all right, how about uh, right there behind you in the red? Yep. Uh, I just want to say really quick, thank you for always doing um, liquor face because <laughs> as a, I bartend here in Las Vegas and nobody is immune to liquor face and everybody 
Liquor thing. Like some self like badass takes a shot at something and takes no That pisses me off too. Yeah. In fact, there are two things that, I'm going to say three things, that I notice when I watch other movies or television series that I'm like, that I almost have to turn it off and not watch it anymore. What are they? It's, if, it's one, liquor face. Liquor face. It's two, uh, somebody driving a car and never checking the mirrors or checking their surroundings yes. or going like this. Well, I told you, the last time I went, it's like, well, they just hit a wall. This is <laughs> With the one caveat that it worked in Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> you know, unless it's for comedy purpose, yes. But that drives me crazy. And then the third thing is uh, actors who look at their marks. Yes. So when they do this, listen to me. <laughs> it's like you gotta just learn how to not look at your that's that's 101 acting there that's so anyway those three things drive me crazy but thank you because yeah when you take a shot of whiskey nobody it's not just like a shot of water yeah and nothing tells you it's water faster than nobody making that like exactly Facebook. well i will keep <laughs> keep this in mind sometimes it is real <laughs> So it's really like Russian roulette. <laughs> we never know. So one of us usually knows. <laughs> and that is why that is we trained ourselves. Regardless of if it's water, it's Oh, that was just water. <laughs> My favorite, some people know the story, and there's going to be one bad word, but for his sake, I'm gonna say it. Uh, the late great Kim Manners, we were shooting the episode. <laughs> Touched the floor. Angels or House of the Holy, whatever it was called. Uh, Touch Angels, House of the Holy. House of the Holy. It changed names like 15 times. In the end scene where Dean walks in and kind of like says, I had a weird experience, hands a flask to Sam, and I hand it back. It was a pretty emotional scene, and we weren't really sure what to make of it just yet because the show hadn't gone in that area. We're like, how do we treat it? Do we treat it like it's a zombie? Do we treat it like maybe the boys are hopeful that there are angels and then possibly demons? <clears throat> Anyways, somebody. I legitimately don't remember if it was Jensen or uh, me, but Jack Daniels in the uh, flask. And so, it must have been you, because I didn't know yet, because the scene is he walks in and takes a drink, and then he hands it to me and I kind of take a drink, and I remember doing it on camera the first time, being like, <laughs> And so a few takes of that, and Manners comes in to give us a, uh, some direction, as a director does. And Ackles just kind of like, undoes the flask, leaves it to Manners, and Manners is like, ah! Like, here you go. Manners goes, yeah, you fucking idiots, here. <laughs> and that was it. It was like, Manners giving us direction and walked back. He wasn't pissed. We were, doing our, we were getting the work done. He was like, uh, idiots. Like, here you go, idiots. <laughs> Rest in peace. So, uh, yes, so you probably, there's a question here somewhere. Yeah, sorry. Right. I went off on my bad. <laughs> um, I don't get it. Um, but, uh, so my question is, um, uh, both Jared and Misha now have had the opportunity to play characters who aren't their normal character, like the Dreeling, who's her, Jimmy, May, uh... So was <laughs> That was kind of the yeah, was yeah. <laughs> So, uh, all of Dean's evolutions have, you know, like, Purgatory Dean and future, now past Dean and uh, <laughs> Demon Dean have all been, like, actual evolutions. We've heard of his glimpse Dean. Uh, all actual evolutions of these characters. It was a glimpse, it wasn't actually telling the future. It was, it was too late to start Because it was he was saying, listen, this is what could happen if this happens. So here's a glimpse in your future of repercussions that will happen if you don't do A, B, and C. The point is there's gotta be a better name than So it wasn't actually it wasn't like this is the future. It's this is the future if. I do have a question. <laughs> uh, it, this, it's, this is 12, or 12 years, basically. Yeah. We need to solve that scene. It's not going to be Hi. Um, In the red there? You <laughs> Like to explore and get 
to like shrug off the comfortable jacket of the dean and maybe try and play somebody else for a living. No, I am so comfortable. <laughs> I, this is, I am, I am happy in the dean world. Uh, that, you know, I will say yes, because it has always been just uh, versions of Dean, even though Dean and Dean, it was still Dean. Uh, so there is always the common denominator of having Dean as, as the base of whatever version of that that I play. Yes, he's had to play different versions, or uh, different versions of Sam, but also different characters. Uh, so I don't think I've really had to do that, and I don't know. I uh, That's not been a decision of mine. Uh, I don't write the show, I'm not responsible for the storylines. I just kind of do what they tell me if I have a major problem with it, obviously I'll take it up with the writers, but um, I've never really had to do that. So I don't know whether that is a conscious decision on the writers to be like, you know, we don't want to get rid of Dean. We need Dean to stay in him in order to facilitate these other characters going rogue. Uh, or to take care of that or whatever it may be. Um, the reason that they haven't made me play somebody else is I don't know, it's a mystery to me. So, uh, maybe they will. I don't know. Do you remember the one time you did go to bat, well, the most recent time you really went to bat with the writers? It made it to the gag reel. <laughs> you directed the episode. Oh, yeah, the hammer. <laughs> the hammer versus the knife. And so, finally, he really wanted the ball being hammer, and the writers wanted the knife. Um, for, so, for the Demon Dean. Demon Dean to chase him season. season. <laughs> and so finally, when we free him from Demon, we're like, why did you grab a hammer? Why did you grab a knife or something? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next. <laughs> Kmart. Oh, yes, please keep it down a bit. It's really loud. Someone's hungover. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Do I know? 14, 64, 19, 7, <laughs> 25, if you win, we split. <laughs> way over there, I see, yes, you, yes. Hi, um, you guys talk about joking around a lot. Um, what's the longest it's ever taken you guys to actually get a scene, and like how many takes did it take? <laughs> There's well documented uh, um, talks and, and panels of Misha telling a story of him actually not being able to complete his scene until we were removed from the set. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's as if he was shooting a scene here. He was like, I need you to leave. And we went to the hallway. He's like, no, no, I need you to leave the casino. <laughs> We were just laughing so hard that we didn't really realize and that we had been used to it. And at first we were like, you know, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever. And he turned to our first AD, I believe it was Johnny back at the time. And he's like, Johnny, I, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. it. It's just pointless at this point to do the scene with either of these guys in the building. And Johnny just turns and very seriously goes, guys, take a walk. We were just like, seriously? Like, yeah, Robin, can you just come in here and read both Jared Jensen's lines, please, so Misha can actually get his coverage? Hey, Marks. Jared Jensen, seriously, guys, go, walk, take a walk. I'll, I'll, I'll get Cliff in here to remove you. Like, oh, all right, that's fine. Uh, so, that one took a while. Uh, there was also some earlier years where uh, uh, Jared's gastrointestinal issues <laughs> were clear set. <laughs> for about a half an hour. It's interesting, since he got married, since he got married and had kids, not much issue. Generally worked for magic on you, buddy. I stopped working out so much, I stopped eating so much protein. There was just so much junk. Junk. Um, but what is, I mean, we've, generally, it's self-inflicted time wasting. Wasting that is that, that takes up so much time. Um, it's very rare that it is something technical or some sort of crew mistake. Those guys are all pros and they're there just to watch us mess up. Uh, <laughs> you know, the other day we had like a light go down in a, it's a called a BFL, uh, which is a condor, um, and it's big effing light. It's BFL. Uh, so that was a big light you see up in the sky. 
and uh, and that went down. Well, that takes a lot. You've got to like lower an 80 foot platform down. You've got to re replace the bulb. So that's 45 to an hour right there. Wow. That rarely happens. Usually, it's just him and I screw it off. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, right here in the glasses. <laughs> okay, so. I was a fan of One Tree Hill long before I ever watched Supernatural, so that's my family, if you all know Danielle before we do you. Uh, so I get my family out of the whole convention and I'll be like, you know, Jensen did this, and they're like, which one's Jensen? I'm like, Danielle's like, uh, So it's kind of an So if you say, if you say Jared did this, you'd be like, Danielle's not hot. <laughs>
section together, so, oh well, next time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, where are we at? How about with the phone out there? What was that screen? Color. Color. <laughs> so you know. Red. <laughs> It is so refreshing to have the boys talking to each other this season. Oh, and <laughs> I was sitting in my living room just knowing that Dean was not going to tell Jared that his deepest desire was the darkness. And you did. You told him. And that I told well, I I mean, Sam. Dean told Sam. Yes, I told Sam. But Jared heard. I almost fell out of the chair. I was like, oh my god, I was just saying, he's not going to tell him. He's not going to tell him. He's going to go again. But you did. Thank you. And that was refreshing. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> my question is, is since season 12 is coming, are we going to see some directing again next season? From moi? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, in fact, we just had a, a sit-down conversation with uh, Mr. Singer, um, and uh, <coughs> until we're finished with this season, they don't really start uh, lining those slots up. They have ideas, and they'll put those uh, those offers out to the agents and the directors and stuff like that. With me, it's a little different because it's kind of in-house, um, so they just kind of have to you know, ask me if I want to, and then I need to think about whether or not um, I want to commit. Because it's, I will warn you, it, it is, or I will tell you, it is a, it's a, it's an exhausting endeavor. Uh, I can't, I can't imagine doing a, a full feature film, uh, you know, the, the way that some of these guys do. But the, the real thing is, is you're doing an episode of television, like our show, you have, you know, a week, to a week and a half of prep time. And before that, you're reading and breaking up the script and trying to get ideas of what you want to do. Because it's all up to you. You've got all 80 people staring at you and saying, what do you want us to do? And that, that can be pretty daunting. So uh, to break that down, then to prep, then to facilitate and film, and then to then go into post-production and edit and do all that stuff, it is a, it's, you know, almost a month of draining experience. So. That's why you don't see directors shoot one episode after another. They'll shoot, you know, Bob, Phil, they'll shoot four a year out of 23 episodes because they need that recovery time. Well, I don't get that recovery time because I gotta go right back and actually be dean and filming for the next nine months. And so to start out, stop it. <laughs> to start out, it's, um, <laughs> It's like, it's like sprinting the first four miles of a marathon and then going, okay, now we're going to need you to continue to jog for the rest of the, you know, whatever it is. So it's, uh, it, it's, I'll have to talk, if they allow me to do it, they say, yeah, we, you know, it, it's up to you, I'll have to have a sit down talk with the deal and be like, all right, can we go through this again? Um, I will say I, there's, there's a lot of enjoyment that I get out of it and there's a lot of, uh, um, it's, it's just, you know, to be able to be in a space, like she, we were talking about the crew earlier, we do have an amazing crew. And I know a lot of people say, a lot of actors, oh, it's, you know, the crew is amazing, but I mean, we really have family. We've been with these people for uh, over a decade, uh, a lot of them. And to be in a, uh, an environment like that and to, and to know that they're not going to let you fail is just a really, it's an inspiring thing. Um, and to, you know, to have people that you can lean on for ideas or support, uh, is uh, it's a pretty incredible thing. I've been very fortunate to do, you know, I think what five episodes now. Um, so hopefully uh, it works out. If not, that's okay. You know, maybe there'll be a season 13 and I'll do one. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say that after our conversation uh, with Bob, I think he, if things work out, you know, with deals and the agents and contracts and stuff, I think they're I think they're going to bring back a few directors that you guys will, will be very happy to have, so I know we will. I see two people waving their arms, and I don't know if they both have a question, but if so, I want y'all to fight. <laughs>
<laughs> like Donald Trump, fight each other. <laughs> no, she's my mom. Okay. About, about a head of heart attack. It um, looks like your sister. Uh, <laughs> uh, Alright. <laughs> it's often the most evil people who are the nicest people. <laughs> anyway, I really wanted to know, Jim Beaver said earlier that you guys did not have, I don't think, the ability to prank him good enough. He issued a challenge, and I really want to know how you're going to retaliate to that. juices are flowing. <laughs> He's difficult to prank. Uh, I remember one time when he was laying in the hospital bed. Oh yeah! Holding his little sheet up and getting his big toe and going like, just squeezing on it. And he I remember staring at that and then lo looking at him like, how <laughs> is that not? And just stone face. Like, <laughs> not going to do it. He said, that, he said that was the worst you've ever done. Like, <laughs> There's some of the jokes on us. He has no feeling from the knee down. <laughs> he has a prosthetic toe. He wears fake feet outside of his actual feet. <laughs> Preparation for me. Uh, that's a good question. All right. All right. Gauntlet has been thrown. Challenge accepted. We're going to thank him. Okay. Thanks, All right. I think we got one more question. Uh, last question. All right. You did a glittery sign. Let's do that one. <laughs> you knew he'd go for the glitter, didn't you? Yep. Always <laughs> does. Shiny object. Good morning. Uh, it's my birthday. Uh, it's not my birthday, but thank you. My birthday. Oh, thank so, you. Very belated. My birthday's in July. <laughs> My favorite thing on that note, all my, my favorite thing is like when driving around on December 26th or 27th or January 1st, when you see people with Christmas lights to look like, man, they're really putting them up early, huh? <laughs> 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 sometimes have meaning that we don't necessarily see right away. Um, maybe it's just to set up a storyline. Maybe it's to set up Sam going to hell and talking to Lucifer or or Dean, you know, missing that call so that you can't stop <coughs> Sam going to, or whatever it is. Um, there's generally a method to the madness and we have to trust that the writers have a method and, and so far they have. So, uh, you know, we hope you do too. The only times that I feel like, Sam, Dean, you're such idiots, is when it's actually like a fight scene scenario where maybe we finished most of the sigil with like a finger and then demons run in and we're like fighting them and losing and then finally we put the finger up and they explode. And you're like, why didn't they just do it the second the demon? <laughs> He's about to die, and he like pours salt, and so the guy starts picking up the salt or whatever and counting it. I actually added the line, like, 
why did I do that in the first place? <laughs> uh, we have something else coming up like that where you're like, why don't they just finish this, which would have taken a millisecond before getting beat up for like 15 hours? Because then they wouldn't have the scene of them getting beaten up, and the, 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 the bad guy wouldn't have been able to give his exposition about why he's doing what he's doing. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a hundred times when it's like, they, they are highly trained, they've been doing this their entire life, how when they get they get thrown across a room, does their weapon always get always <laughs> high and at least they can't find it? What is it done? You know, like, first of all, two, two things. One, whenever, whenever we do actually get flown, or get, you know, get sent flying off of a, whether it's an air ram or whether it's we throw ourselves, the, the instinctual thing to do is to grip tight. So I've actually had to tell my stunt double, Todd Scott, multiple times, dude, you gotta lose the knife when you get thrown through the closet. And he's like, right, got it. Every time, bro. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so right there, it's just like, I, but again, then we would be armed and we would just kill the person and they wouldn't be able to choke us and tell us what they're doing and why they're doing what they're doing. And none of us would know anything. So and then, also, we wouldn't be able to get saved by our brother. That's right. Love y'all guys. All right, guys. We'll see y'all in a little bit.